Howdy folks, it's Potato the Moose. Today I'm going to be talking about my feelings about the ocean over a speed paint that took me maybe a little over a month to complete. To be clear, this speed paint is song inspired and I originally got the idea while listening to the song Farewell by Burnt. I really apologize if my audio sounds muffled at all over the course of this video. It's been a while since I last recorded and I definitely don't have a very good setup. I figure I should start with a general overview of my feelings before I go off into the seaweed. Awful pun, I'm sorry. If you ask me, the ocean is both really pretty and absolutely freaking terrifying. On the one hand, there's a lot of beauty to be found in the life forms there, in the colors the water takes on, and in the strange bigness of it all. On the other hand, so much of it is unexplored, and you could absolutely drown or get horribly lost in there. I'd say that's definitely something that plays into why I've got both the lassophobia and semicanophobia. I can't look at a lot of underwater images without my skin crawling, which is really sad because I'm also fascinated by all kinds of marine life and really enjoy drawing characters inspired by different kinds of fish, meaning sometimes I have to face my fears and look at reference images. The person in this speed paint was inspired by lionfish, which might actually be one of my least favorite fish. I'm not sure why, but I've never liked the conventional fish that a lot of people like. I'd say my top three favorite aquatic creatures are actually moray eels, alligator gar, and giant isopods. In fact, I actually have such a soft spot for giant isopods that I have a plushie of one that sits on my bed. Furthermore, ever since the Monterey Bay Aquarium set up a touch tank with them, yes, you heard that right, touch tank, the water is like frigid by the way, they've been my favorite part of the whole aquarium. If you don't know what an isopod is, they're related to crustaceans like lobsters, shrimp, and crabs. The closest relative that you can probably see to them in your daily life are pill bugs, also known as sow bugs, wood lice, and roly polies. You can find them anywhere. Note that I would not recommend searching up deep sea isopods, however, unless you are comfortable with seeing a bug slightly smaller than the average dinner plate. I think they're fun friends, but my parents disagree and Honestly, I guess I can't blame them. I'm... I'm a weird kid who likes bugs, you guys. I'm sorry. Their biology makes me incredibly happy, and so does marine biology. You see, the anatomy of sea creatures is so different from what we see on land, and it's, it's so beautifully alien compared to us. There are bioluminescent sharks, eels with an internal jaw, massive mammals that spend their whole lives in the water, and more. There are some creatures out there that have barely evolved in the past several thousand years. In fact, so much of Earth's oceans are still undiscovered that it's an incredibly special resource and hotspot for science. Personally, I think that makes them also one of the most eldritch things on planet Earth, and I like to imagine that they're full of old gods that we may never see for ourselves. Kinda like the works of H.P. Lovecraft. There's just something about the sea that has sparked legends and folklore all over the world since the dawn of humanity, and I'll probably end up touching on that again in a later video. I feel especially attached to stormy seas. When I was a really little kid, my mom took me to the beach on a particularly gray day. Me, being little and thus not very cognitively developed, like most kids my age, got a little too close to one of the waves and got knocked right over onto my back while mom was holding my hand. I really believe that probably forged my relationship with the sea for the rest of my life, and honestly, I'm happy that way. I like being both fascinated with and afraid of the ocean, and I think that it gives me a perspective in my art that maybe a lot of other people don't have, though obviously I don't speak for everyone.
first started the lighting and background portion of this, I was absolutely on the struggle bus. I'd never done any underwater scenery before, so I downloaded a bunch of special brushes to use. Unfortunately, my computer decided to restart, ate the brushes, and made me have to download all of them again. And what's more, I couldn't even find some of the ones I was using. The bubble brush that you see used in this video, never found it again. I nearly lost my mind. But aside from the technical setback, I ended up really pleased with the underwater art I did. I think I've discovered that with scenes, sometimes less is more, so off camera I had to do some finagling with things like the bubbles and the water texture. Overall, I'd say I'm really proud of what I did here, and did y'all notice I actually used color theory for the first time while drawing this? I'm astonished by the change and the fact that I never learned sooner. I'd definitely say learning it was totally worth it, and that drawing this has helped with my confidence in drawing new kinds of scenery. I'm really happy with how the colors turned out, and the way I did the lighting is absolutely mesmerizing. Anyways, that's all for today, meaning there's nothing but lo-fi beats ahead of us now. If you liked this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button on your way out, and I'll see you later.